buenos días, señoras y señores. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to speak in English. I hope it's uh, it's okay for you. My Spanish is, uh, I'm afraid, not not good enough, so I don't want to uh, bother you with with it. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here today in uh, Basque Country, in San Sebastián, not only because of nice uh, pinchos and uh, cañas that you have here, but also because Basque Country, I think it's a very interesting uh, on European level uh, example of uh, how to run successful industrial policy and how to put in place uh, tools and uh, mechanisms that can really help to boost the economic performance. So I'm uh, really grateful for the organizers and for the Basque Country uh, government for the, for the invitation. Uh, so as, as introduced, I worked in uh, uh, the European Commission. I work in the DG that deals with internal markets, industry, entrepreneurship and SME, so quite a wide uh, branch uh, of uh, topics. And today I would like to show you a European perspective uh, and uh, main challenges faced by the European industry to put a bit more of a broader context to, to your conference and to uh, your discussions. Um, so, talking about uh, challenges that Europe currently is facing, as you know, we are investing in Europe a lot of money on uh, R&D uh, for research and development. Actually, the current Horizon 2020 program is the biggest global program for support of research. We are investing 80 billion euros for research. And in that, um, around 14 billion euros goes for uh, advanced manufacturing related activities. So it's really a lot of money that we put in place to boost research. But the problem that we are facing is that not enough of uh, results of this research and development actually gets to the market. So the problem of commercialization, of transforming the results of these uh, R&D activities into real products, real processes that are um, produced in Europe by European companies and sell on global markets. So, it's not enough just to invest in uh, R&D, but we also have to think how to better uh, capture and sell the potential created by research and uh, development. So, I would say that innovation and innovative performance is, uh, is uh, still something that we have to work on. Now, here you have a map of Europe. Those are the results of the Innovation Union scoreboard. It's, uh, a ranking of uh, countries produced each year that shows how each country in Europe is performing. And actually, the last results show that the innovative performance is stable. It's not really changing. Uh, of course, you have leaders. Uh, the, the best performing country in Europe is Sweden, followed by uh, Denmark, Finland, and Germany that are doing very well. But then you also have countries like Bulgaria, Romania, and Latvia that are performing really badly. So if you take the European average, actually Europe is not performing that well. Uh, Spain is on the uh, 19th position in this ranking. But the picture gets even more complicated when we look at the regional level. That's the map of European regions. Um, and results of, of another scoreboard that we have. It's a regional innovation scoreboard where we look at 190 uh, regions across Europe comparing their innovative performance. So here you can see how even in member states uh, regions are performing differently. Actually, for that, that goes back to, to what I said on the very beginning. Basque Country is uh, the, the, the strongest performance uh, performer in uh, Spain. So it's a good, good example, not only for Spain, but I also think for other European regions. But the problem that we have on the European 
level in terms of region, regions is that the actual differences between regions are growing. So instead of uh, seeing the results of, of all these European funds that we invest in regions for R&D, for innovation, for support of entrepreneurship, um, the, the cohesion process is not, um, it's not bringing its results. So we have actually um, one-fifth of regions that last year their innovative performance got worse instead of improving. So um, something has to be done about it. Also, if you look at the, uh, the global perspective, we see that uh, global leaders, South Korea, USA, and Japan, are outperforming the EU. And those are really the countries that are able to capture the, the potential offered by new technologies. We all know that Internet of Things is, is changing the way we live, the, the way we consume, the way we spend our free time. But also the industrial Internet is changing the way that uh, companies nowadays work uh, the, uh, the ways, the interactions between employers and um, employees. We have big data, we have robots, we have smart sensors, we have machine-to-machine -machine connections, so all those uh, new technologies, uh, a lot of innovation, and EU has to do more uh, to, to keep a good position in this race, because as you can see here, um, our competitors are actively uh, doing things, and if you want to catch up, we have to, we have to uh, make an effort as well. So at the European level, um, in 2013, we established a task force, a task force on advanced manufacturing um, that combines the different uh, services of the Commission that work together to coordinate different policies that we have in place in support of, uh, of advanced manufacturing to try to better use the potential of European R&D and put on the European market more products and more services that actually are the results of, uh, of, of, of R&D. Here you can see uh, this, this, this publication, it's a report we produ produced uh, last year that summarizes the, the main efforts and also the main challenges related to, uh, to the topic. I believe that you also get this, this presentation afterwards, so if you click on the link under the, the, the publication, you can, uh, you can actually get to it and, 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 and take a look. So uh, technologies, um, advanced manufacturing, innovations, that's all very important, but uh, I think uh, those, those issues also pose a lot of questions and worries. If you uh, read many articles nowadays, uh, nowadays in uh, leading magazines, there's a big discussion on how this new industrial revolution will impact employment. There are big worries that robots, that new technologies will actually take away uh, jobs from, from humans. I think it's not really a, a new dilemma since uh, already 19th century we've seen this process. What I think is new nowadays is the speed and the scale of this uh, phenomenon. Um, I think that the, 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 the fourth or industry 4.0 uh, revolution actually will affect most if not all sectors, so the scale of the challenge is a lot bigger than we've, uh, we've uh, seen before. But maybe part of, of the answer lies in your discussions here uh, yesterday and, and today, to change a bit the, the perspective and not treat the automation of production as a threat, but actually more as an opportunity, and then see how skills, how, the, uh, how humans actually can, uh, can complement to that and create something new that haven't seen 
uh, haven't been seen before. So instead of asking what jobs will disappear, maybe we should ask a, a question, uh, what new things people can achieve um, if they actually think about machines as assistant of, of, uh, of humans. Um, in addition, I think that a lot of um, brain work, like empathy, uh, creativity, flexibility, cannot really be codified. So we shouldn't be too afraid of, um, of this industrial revolution, but as I said, rather see it as an opportunity. Um, what's also important and what uh, I, I, I think should be more taken into account is that since the technologies are changing, since um, we observe uh, a completely new speed of technological change, also the businesses have to follow this change. So, if you buy the newest technology, if you invest a lot of new machines, but your business model will stay the same and you will try to operate as you did before, not going to succeed. So um, the technological change needs to be followed also by non-technological non changes, including the, the business model. But, of course, uh, talking about that, we cannot, we cannot forget about uh, skills, we cannot forget about the human factor. As, so, um, I think that your, your work is very important uh, in this regard. And uh, looking at different set of skills is also crucial for the change in Europe. So, of course, we have to think about IT skills, of course, we have to think about STEM skills, but we also have to think about uh, different types of skills like entrepreneurship, like creativity, like working with others, like um, networking, so all kinds of these soft skills that also are very important for the, for the future um, industry. And uh, something that's also important is workplace innovation. And actually that's once more again a reason to, for me to, to, to feel happy to be in Basque Country because Basque Country actually is one of the leaders in terms of workplace innovation. You have some programs and schemes in place that are actually a very good example for other countries and other regions in Europe how workplace innovation can be supported because once more, it's not only about technology, but it's also about the people in the company. So you want to make sure that if you invest in people, you also will get the best out of, out of them. And workplace innovation, I think it's a great tool to motivate people and to fully use their uh, potential. Um, so for, for the support of workplace innovation, we have this European Workplace Innovation Network. I would also uh, encourage you to take a look on our page and see what it's uh, all about and also how you can get engaged in that and uh, not only make a better use of your knowledge but also find partners for projects or look for interesting opportunities um, across Europe. So that's all from my side. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias.